Do you think Alex has stood us up? I don't know. It's nearly midnight. Maybe we should pack it in and call it a day. Let's just hope everything's all right with him. Oh, don't worry about Alex. He's pretty good at taking care of himself. I know, I know. But Clay's just such a sneaky, you know what? You never know what he might call. <sighs> Listen to me. Ever since I started writing a mystery novel, I've developed this darkly suspicious nature. Oh, it's hard not to have that when Clay's concerned. If you're worried, I could drop by the house. No, no, that might upset Alex's game plan. Well, in that case, let's get out of here, Ms. Christie. Or would you prefer P.D. James? Alex can tell us what happened tomorrow. And uh, if I know Rose, she'll probably ground you. Me mm. too, if I don't get you in soon. I'm gonna boss you a smile on the face of this earth. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, how could I have missed this? What? P.W. P.W.? Yes, P.W. It is scrolled on every page of his appointment book. Look! Egad, the plot thickens. Is he on the move? Ah, it's a false alarm. He must have bumped it. <sighs> sure hope he's as good a tracker as he says he is. Look, he's gonna lead us to Tricia, or he's gonna die trying. I trust him. Oh, naturally. As long as he's against me, he can't be all bad, right? Well, you were sure loaded for bear when you came over to my house tonight. What'd you want with Cabot? That is a CB radio. I burned rubber getting here. Gone. Here, step up. Oh. There you go. Oh, my whole body is stiff. I'm not surprised. <sighs> Tell me I'm not hallucinating. Tell me it's really you. Warts and all. No. You're the most beautiful sight I've ever seen. And you can walk. I can hardly believe it. Yeah, that's a good thing, huh? I couldn't have rescued you in my two-wheeler. <laughs> How did it happen? Uh, we'll talk about it later. Listen, what you need right now is something nice and warm for your tongue. Okay, right. okay. Got some nice, fresh, hot tea with plenty of sugar and lemon. But how did it happen so quickly? Well, you know, Dr. Edgar gave me a lot of mumbo-jumbo about how things can turn around so quickly. And I figured it for an obligatory pep talk. I mean, anyway, it's, it's kind of hard to explain right now. Here, take this. Let me see your hand. That'll make you feel good. Jeff, how did you find me? Well, like I told you, I had my suspicions about Bassett and Joey, so I kind of kept my eye on them. Um, that's strange. When I, when I told you I didn't trust her, you defended her. Yeah, it was strange. Mm. We'll talk about it all later. Right now, Dr. Hotman is ordering you to lean your head back, relax, and try and get some shut-eye. Oh, yeah. I'm awfully tired. Oh, Jeff. It'll be so nice to go home.
Well, well, Jolie. Believe it or not, this is your lucky day. other things on our minds right now, like getting Trisha back? A simple question demands a simple answer. What did you want to talk to my father about? Well, never mind, I know. It's probably, you probably just wanted to throw a few more accusations my way, right? I think you know the answer. What is with you? Why are you always sucking up to the old man? I'm not sucking up to anybody. Maybe I'm displaying my loyalty. Oh, loyalty, that's good. That's right up there on my father's top list of virtues. Alex, you got any ideas about becoming a beloved member of my family again? You better just forget about it because you're going to be sorely disappointed. Listen, it doesn't matter what I do, and it doesn't even matter what you do, but somehow you and I are always going to be tied together, whether we like it or not. Yeah, well, we all got our crosses to bear, Paisan. Yeah, and you have a bigger cross than most people. You got a daughter that won't speak to you, and a father that doesn't trust you, and a son that hates you. All right, all right, that's enough. Do you know you have alienated just about everybody in your family? How do you do that? Changes, it's always been that way. No, it wasn't always that way. When we were prisoners in that camp, you used to talk about your family with such love and such devotion. You swore, you swore that if you ever made it out alive, that you would take that old claim and you would bury him. Nothing's really changed. Everything is just pretty much the same. It would have been different if you hadn't, if you'd stayed out of the mix. That doesn't wash and you know it. But you had your chance. You had a chance to start new, start fresh, but you you couldn't keep that clay buried, could you? You blew it, man. Oh, you listen to me. If we find Trisha, if she's if she's alive, then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start new. I'm gonna do everything right. I will. What's that? That's it. That's it. They must have picked up the ransom. He's on the move. All right, all right. Yes, Siri, your lucky day. Hey, you know what I got here? One million bucks. Yeah, that's right. A cool million cash. Now, of course, I realize that's a little less than you and Dale tried to squeeze out of the Aldens, but you'll probably agree that you're in a hell of a bad bargaining spot. So, Jolie, how do you like getting a taste of what you did to Trisha? Yeah, it's a real bummer, huh? No, 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 no. Come on, now. relax. You gotta save your strength because, A, you're just not getting out of here until your boyfriend shows up. B, when he comes back, I want you two creeps to take this money and start running for your life and keep on running until Corinth becomes a dim, distant light. You got that straight? Now you listen to me, girl. If you are ever dumb enough to come back to Corinth, if you ever try to hurt Trisha again, I will make sure that you enjoy your final days as guests of the state prison. And not just for kidnapping, either. <laughs> Item, car theft, Omaha, jump bail. Item, extortion, Wichita, six months in the county lockup. Item, suspected drug dealing, Emporia. Item, now. Nah. There's more, but I've got kind of a weak stomach. <laughs> you know, you are just a case of good old-fashioned virtues, aren't you, Joey? A real prize. <laughs> Count your blessings. Here's a little something to keep you company. Nope, don't bother thanking me, Julie. I know that I have a kind heart. Like I said, just keep running. Hold on, 
losing, I'm losing the signal. Just take it easy, will you? Right. You must have changed direction. You turn, turn left on that little cutoff right there. Slow down, well, we're getting too close to it. What are you doing? I didn't say stop. I don't want them to hear the engine. God, Alex, what if he's hurt? What if, what if, what if they hurt Trisha? Concentrate. That's it. He pushed the button. They must be near Trisha. All right, let's move. Hospital. Robert, have a look at this. A counterfeiting scam is uncovered. Robert! Jimmy! Stop! Jimmy! Stop! And when the crook turns out to be Catherine's aunt, I am. Scorpio ends up in hot water. I intend to personally initiate a lawsuit against the Port Charles Police Department for false arrest, and I intend to ask that the police commissioner be stripped of his badge for his irresponsible behavior. General Hospital. Are you making fun of me? Moi? Look at this. It is doodled all over his appointment book. It pops up like a case of, of the chicken pox. Now, don't you find that suspicious? His face, it could mean anything. Oh, it's obviously, it's obviously somebody's initials. Or some things, like pension and welfare. Clay could be looking into the company's payments. No, I'm sure Clay has some vague idea on what pension is, but I doubt he'd recognize welfare if, if he tripped over it. No, and besides, they have an accounting department that takes care of all that stuff. Well, <laughs> prisoner of war? No, no, that's P.O.W. Percival Wickham. Who is he? I don't know, I made him up. Jack! Well, I see him as sort of a gentleman's gentleman. Maybe Clay has a yen for a valet. Well, come on, will you get serious? Why is it in initials when everybody else's name is, is spelled out? I know why. Because Clay is obviously trying to hide this guy's identity. <laughs> Stacy, you have to get out of the mystery business before you develop a permanent case of the creeping paranoia. And besides, what makes you think it's a guy? Knowing Uncle Clay, he could be having assignations right under Ava's executive I nose. Mean, here it is again, and this time it is underlined twice. <laughs> what do you think of that, Watson? Fascinating. I might even say alluring. You're obviously not focused on what is going on here. Obviously not. I don't know what happens when I get close to you. I haven't felt this way since, uh... Since? Since I had a brief encounter with a beautiful but rather daffy young woman on a train. Now, in this book I'm writing, Okay. I'm going to have the heroine do that to the hero every time he starts teasing her or every time he starts, you know, doing other stuff that impairs their investigation. Uh -huh. Okay, that ought to stop him cold. I, I think cold won't be the net result. Okay, now, to continue. By all means. What do you think of this PW? Do you think I'm onto something here? Do you think I'm way out in left field? I don't know, Stace. Maybe not. <laughs> what is this? A semi-vote of confidence? What? I'm sorry, I've been giving you so much flack. I have the weirdest feeling that I should know what these initials mean, that they should have some sort of significance to me. P.W. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. We just 
I've only been sitting here for a few seconds. Really? Oh, feels like longer than that. Well, I'm so out of it. Well, I have to admit, I was kind of out of it, too. I was crazy with worry about you. Jeff, please. I want to go far away from here. We will. We will. Just drink a little bit more of this. I have to call Lieutenant Hendon and tell him where they can pick up Jolie. Uh, Lieutenant Hemmen, please, or whoever's in charge. This is Jeff Hartman. I, it's about my wife's kidnapping. I feel so sorry for Jolie. Well, she didn't waste any sympathy for you. Mr. I know. It's silly. So sorry. Look, Lieutenant, this is Lieutenant, this is Jeff Hartman speaking. I found my wife. I've got her here with me right now. She's safe. You can pick up the one or two. If you're listening, oh, I'm sorry. Look, I didn't hurt her. Come on, here. 
Tomorrow, Carol has a problem dealing with everyone else's problems on growing pains. Then Arvie gets Wednesday night fever. It's a blast. It's a gas. It's head of the class. Coming up, the nightmare continues as Brooke pleads with Adam to give Dixie the baby. Stay tuned for All My Children, next. Thank you.